Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Insightful Accountant webinar, Paperless Payments, Release the Genius, sponsored by CheckRun. Insightful Accountant is an online news and information source written for small business advisors interested in the latest news and offerings in accounting technology. My name is Emily Hedrick, and I will be your webinar host. If you have any questions during the session, please enter them in the Q&A box, and we'll try to address them. Everyone will receive a follow-up email later today with the recording and presentation. Today's speakers are Liz Scott and Rich Love. Liz Scott is a certified QuickBooks advisor and partner in the Oklahoma City-based firm Accounting Lifeline, which specializes in QuickBook training, setup, support, and advisory services for small businesses. Liz is a member of the Intuit Trainer Writer Network and writes blogs, course curriculum for the accounting community and presents live trainings throughout the US. Rich Love is the founder and CEO of AP Technology LLC, of which CheckRun is the subs subsidiary. <laughs> Mr. Love has pioneered advanced technologies and innovations in the payments industry for over 35 years. Today, Mr. Love and AP Technology continue to pioneer business payments with their systems often often processing card, ACH, and check payments over $1 billion per day. A frequent speaker at technology and payment events, Richard Love holds four patents and three additional patents pending. Liz, Rich, thank you both for being here with us today. And when you're ready, you can get started. Thank you. I want to say, uh, without further ado, I want to welcome everyone here. Today's presentation is all about paperless payments, and there will be a demo about midway through today's webinar for accountants and bookkeeping firms and anyone else who processes payments and wants to look at a solution that can help with that process. So I'm sure all of you know where the chat is. If you have any questions, I wanna encourage you to post them in the chat because this will be a very dynamic event. We have Check Run team members here on the call with us today and they're going to be answering any payment questions and uh, solution questions. And then we also have technical support here, Emily. And so thank you, Emily, for all that you do. And so she's gonna be the person that if you have webinar technical questions, you can ask Emily. So I want to, uh, there we go. So I want to tell you that it's an absolute pleasure to be here. And most of you know me, but those of you who do not, I am an accountant practitioner like most of you here today. And our firm offers, offers small businesses with any type of QuickBooks needs. And we have a couple of areas that we specialize, but one of the things that we focus on is cleaning up the processes for our clients and to allow for integrations. One of the things that I often hear from my clients is they're like, hey, can you go connect an app for me? But mostly because of there might be some process issues or there might be a little bit of cleanup to do before we could actually integrate a solution. That's one of the things I like to start with is I like to start with what's the company process? And then that helps me to understand what's the right solution for those people. So I'm going to present today based on my experience and then my expertise as far as technology. And I would like to welcome Rich Love. So Rich, would you like to take a minute to introduce yourself? Sure, sure. Uh, thanks, very, thanks very much, Liz. Uh, I think we got pretty deep introduction on me already. Um, I think the only thing I'd like to throw in there is that, uh, you know, thank you very much for having us today. Uh, that uh, you know we're we're not new to the party. Uh, we've been doing payments. Um, AP Technology has been doing payments since 1989. Uh, we've been innovating technology since 1989, and we're really proud of our Check Run uh, mobile apps and our Check Run uh, uh, cloud application that we're going to talk about today. So, really want to focus on that. And uh, the I guess the last piece is is that uh, um, anybody wants to. Anybody wants to play a really fun game, you got to try out pickleball sometime. Did you say pickleball? Like, I did. <laughs> okay, all right. I thought I heard that correctly, but I've never heard of it, so I had to ask for clarification. 
It's, uh, it's, it's a game that's, uh, there's over 3 million people in the United States that are playing it. So it's really, really taken off, especially in the last year, uh, because it's a small kind of tennis court and you play with a pad a paddle, but it's just very addictive. It just, uh, anybody can play very quickly and you don't have to have lots of skill to, you know, to be able to play and just go out there and play. So it's, it's got a dumb name, but go check it out sometime. How fun. Well, you know, I, I, I was talking to my son the other day about tennis. I was like, we need to get, you know, back into tennis. I used to play all the time. Perfect. So I am going to say that most of you are familiar with the payments process and this webinar is going to be perfect for you because this is going to give you another option for payment processing. And we're going to be covering a few basics during the webinar, but we will also be sharing some process or workflow options, however you call it. Uh, whenever I was in school, it was like workflow had to have a certain diagram to it. And um, now it's kind of like we just talk about workflow as it's part of the process. So we're going to be um, doing that demo that I mentioned, but the thing that we're going to be talking about is the bottlenecks. How do they get there? Who's responsible? How do we fix them? And so we want to make sure that we have really good internal and external workflows. We wanna have a good work environment. Now COVID's here, we wanna have a really nice online work environment, but I'll tell you, and I'm sure that most of you are the same, we were online prior to COVID. So the thing that is really nice is that the rest of the world is starting to catch up with us. And our clients are starting to really rely on that online communication because that's where business is happening. So you need to be able to, to do business where it's taking place and that's an online world. And so we need to bridge that gap to be able to move people from paper over to digital, help them to understand there are phases to this and uh, that way it's in bite-sized pieces and they can learn the new process. And then the, um, about midway through, like I said, there's gonna be a demo. So we're gonna be focusing on the conversation and then we're gonna get to look at the solution. That's my favorite. So uh, I'd like to go ahead and say, we'll get started, Emily, with a poll, if you can launch that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and count this one down. So what payment methods require pre-funding? ACH, e-checks, paper checks, all of the above, or A and B. So I'm gonna do a countdown from five, four, three, two, and one. And then Emily has shared the results with us and great, all of the above. So, um, we have some options here to look at. So with the paper checks uh, pre-funding, so you know, being able to understand that you need to have money in the bank in order to uh, pay your bills. And that's sometimes hard to manage. So we're gonna be talking about that here in a little bit. So what do I mean by release the genie in the bottle? Well, this is all about what can we do to problem solve? And whenever I'm thinking about problem solving, one of my best, um, my favorite quotes from Albert Einstein is, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes thinking about the solution. So even Einstein believed that the quality of the solution you generate is in direct proportion to your ability to identify the problem you hope to solve. So to achieve an ideal outcome, you must identify those problems. And I know that we have a couple of issues whenever we start thinking about problem solving, because all of us have to make decisions daily, but most of us have never had training on problem solving. So we know how critical it is in our world to be able to respond and make decisions effectively, but people tend to do a couple of different things whenever they're facing a problem. They get afraid or uncomfortable, and they wish the problem would just go away. And then they also, I uh, want to find somebody else to blame if they can't figure out the right answer. And there's a couple of different things that go along with that too, but it's all about problem solving skills. And so that's part of identifying what the process is because then you're gonna be able to understand where the problems are. 
And so today we're going to be looking at the payment solution based on the problem many of us have in the payments world. So many businesses not only want, but they need to be able to approve checks with a mobile app. They also need to be able to stay on top of their workflow, which means some notifications. Those are best whenever they're, they're automatic. You don't have to do anything with them. Uh, just recently, I did a really cool integration with my Monday board and Slack. And so I was able to notify everybody about everything that's going on. I don't have to do anything. There's not a button for me to push. It's an automation. You want that in your workflows. You want to take the people out of that task as much as possible. And, uh, you know, whenever I think about our problem, so spending time on that problem starts with identifying that problem. So identify what those issues are, understand everyone's interest. And it is really critical to get buy-in by understanding everybody's interest. And so if you think about, oh, I really, really don't want to change. And we go back to, why don't we do more problem solving? Well, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to come up with a whole new process. And that's why it's important. It's really key to understand how can you help somebody get buy-in by understanding what it is that they need. And if it's like saying something along the lines of, well, goodness, if, if you understand the solution and there's some cross training that takes place and guess what, now you get to take a two week vacation. Well, that's a huge um, way to, to compel to somebody's own personal interests. Because most people don't wanna change just for the sake of changing. It's not always fun. And then you also wanna list some solutions. So what are some options that you have available to you? And then you're gonna evaluate those options again together because you wanna make sure that you have buy-in. If you just create a scenario where they wake up, your client or your firm and your team members wake up in a whole new world, it's really frustrating. And so you wanna make sure that whenever you find this problem, you go and you say, hey, let's look at what all, all of the options are here. And I'm gonna say maybe this is the option that I recommend, here it is, silver platter, but at least you go through what are the reasons that you picked that solution. And then you wanna do something that, you know, at least says, hey, we've documented this to agree that this is our solution. And then you can always go back and you can reevaluate. I encourage reevaluation because there's people who get hired that maybe you need to go back and make sure that they're included in that. How are their interests being met? So lots of key elements whenever you think about the problem, problem solving and the decision making. Whenever we think about the problem that is with payments, the payments are not the, uh, I mean, the payments are being issued because there's goods and services that are needed. Well, the goods and services aren't the problem. And the problem is, is that our payment solution doesn't fit today's world. And sometimes if you find a payment solution, it's very complex. And so you have to think about all of the people's interests and do they want this complexity there? Or is it really best to just keep it simple in a solution that has some simple options. Very, very straightforward. Keep your clients, keep your uh, staff, your team in the same place that they're doing their work. Which means if they're QuickBooks customers like I am, I use QuickBooks online, then what we're gonna be looking at is a solution that goes along that plan of working with QuickBooks online and having an app integrated with it. And so there's millions of dollars that are being paid out to businesses for goods and services. In fact, it's estimated that $21.7 million that are being paid daily, that $21.7 million is being direct payments that are made from businesses for goods and services. So that's a lot of problem. I mean, a lot of um, um, payments that are being out there. And so those businesses are not the problem. These payments are what we need to look at to evaluate because lots of businesses need to be able to create some type of payment, whether it's construction, um, you know, like one of, one of my favorite scenarios is, is building uh, customers. So whenever I'm working with a builder, a general contractor, one of the things that they have is lots of different bank accounts. And so they need to have some way to be able to print out some checks and they wanna be able to print out of multiple different bank accounts. Well. If you've got check stock that has all of those different bank accounts listed on it, one, it's a security risk, and two, that also means that you've got to keep 
an eye on which account is being written for that check and did it all match up and um, there's a better way. So I want to I want to create the most simple streamlined process possible. So who is part of that check process? And it's the business and the accountants and the bookkeepers. So they're part of that process. And again, I would argue they are not the problem. It goes back to improving your workflow, improving your workflow that happens internally and externally. So making sure that it's communicated and it's clearly documented. So realizing a really good app means that it's an extension of your business. It's not something that feels segregated. It's something that feels like it's included inside of your processes. And the way that, that a good app should work is it acts as a department. And there goes those auto notifications. So you wanna be able to say, my department just sent me a notification that this happened. And then that app is acting like a person or a department that you really need. So whenever I think about what accountants need, accountants really need to connect with their clients remotely. Most of you, like myself, are already remote. You've been remote for a while, but you need to make sure that everything that you're doing this to support those clients really goes along with the idea of it's online and it's remote and it's supported remotely and your clients are able to get those notifications as well when needed. And then I would even say too, for audit purposes, I wanna be able to store an image of that check inside of my accounting solution. So for me, it's QuickBooks Online. So I wanna be able to store that payment image inside of QuickBooks Online if I am the one who processes that payment or if my client processes that payment. It's a good idea to have that piece of documentation to back up the data. And whenever you're spending time on the problem, and you're identifying the different obstacles, there's a couple of different things that, that we know can happen. And so documents get lost, there's bottlenecks, and it's people dependent. So you go back to, if you were trying to appeal to somebody who really didn't want to learn a new technology, but you said, hey, we can cross train, we can remove this people dependency or this particular person dependency. And that way it's easier to be able to share the responsibility and that actually helps to prevent fraud. So whenever you point out those key elements, you're gonna to appeal to two different people. One, the fraud aspect of the business owner is going to really enjoy that. And then the other part too is the cross training and being able to have a standard format. And so your productivity, like productivity is going to rise. And I would also say that ACH funds are hard to report and manage. And so there is a trend that businesses are going back to some type of payment solution that they can see as they want to be able to pull these reports. They want to be able to know what their cash flow is. And e-payments are sometimes invisible. And if you bring it back into the QuickBooks uh, online scenario where you're working and doing the processing there, then it's really nice to be able to see the entire workflow. And whenever you have an app that's going to integrate with your accounting solution, again, you're still gonna be able to see the pieces that you need uh, inside of your accounting solution, QuickBooks Online. And I'm gonna go ahead and say at this time, Emily, can you go ahead and put up our next poll? Thank you. And I'll go ahead and Read this one, my business struggles with coordinating payment approvals and check signing with team, uh, teams working remotely. And there's three different answers there. And I'm gonna go ahead and count us down. So five, four, three, two, and one. And so we have a little bit of a split right here. So I would say um, about 43% are saying, hey, I'm good, but the rest of us are saying, hey, we need some improvement. And it's gotten worse with COVID. I would, I, I understand that. Uh, you know, that again goes back to our businesses really need to be able to be uh, working with us and having those um, notifications that are sent. So what all can be 
the problem? What all can be um, release that tension? So if we think about the system that has tension on it, it can be the part where there's manual entry taking place. So there's purchase orders, there's goods received, and then bills are generated. And so all of these pieces, if they're manual, can take a lot of time. And then there's the manual part of it that's the signature of the payment. And then there's approval of the payment. So there's lots of different places where bottlenecks can occur. And my belief is, is the sooner that you can start automating in your process, the better. And so I would say start at the earliest stages, which is going to be scanning in those bills into your accounting solution and using the OCR technology that's available inside of QuickBooks Online, which is going to reduce that manual data entry. And then I would also say the people get in the way of the process too. There are two reasons why we tend to see a problem as a problem. It has to be solved and we're not sure how to find the best solution. And there will probably be conflicts about what the best solution is. And most of us are conflict averse. And so we don't feel comfortable dealing with that content. So sometimes we freeze up, but that doesn't allow us to move forward with what can our solution be and what is on the other side of being able to learn a solution and then implement it. So if we understand our mission, we create that process and then we train the people to rely on the system, that's whenever we start reducing the time spent on that task. That's whenever we start reducing the number of errors that we find. So understanding the goals prevents us and um, helps us to overcome those conflicts. So everyone wants to pay their bills on time. Nobody wants to have their bills late. Nobody wants to have duplicate payments for goodness sakes. I mean, that's a big one right there. And so I would even say accountants, we are perfectionists. We are a group of people who, um, you know, as one of my friends says, a B is not okay. We want A's. And so we want to be at the top of the class. It's not okay. It's embarrassing whenever we come back and say, hey, we've made a mistake. Well, they're gonna happen, but one way that we can prevent those is by making sure that we have an automated system that is going to check for errors, like being able to say if we uh, in a, uh, upload a bill and our system says, oh, we've seen that bill before, that's a duplicate. Well, that's one place that we can have a checkpoint to make sure that we don't have an error in the system. So what are the steps in creating a workflow? Because we want to look at all the different common problems that can happen. One of the things that we do is we start with the beginning of the process and what we would like the end to look like. So a good workflow includes both the people and the process. So you wanna start by identifying all of the pieces that are in the process. And then again, I'm gonna go back to what are the different people uh, that are in, involved in that. And you can start with simple things. You can do sticky notes in order to be able to start documenting who's doing what and where. That's okay, sticky notes can be moved around. You can put them on your desk and you can say, this is what I understand, share it with your clients and then they can fill in the gaps wherever they may be. I think that's a very fair thing to do. And then whenever you think about those elements and how they align with the solution, that's whenever you eliminate this confusion. And so if we look at releasing that tension, I want more M&Ms, I'm just gonna say. So if it comes to a situation like this, the more is the better. And because you've got some airflow in here, you've released that tension on that bottleneck. So instead of having a trickle of payments coming through and a trickle of signatures, instead you've got an automated solution where the payments can be approved in one big swath. And there what you've done is you eliminated that tension. And so what can that actually look like? And so here are the different tasks that are associated with each stage. So you've got the goods and the services phase, You've got the bill automation phase, and that can be emailed, scanned, and then that QBO sync that can happen. To make sure that QBO sync, what I mean by that is that it can, at that point, send over data into your payment solution. And then inside of your payment solution, that's where the approval is going to take place. That can be emailed, that can be uh, mobile. But then the other preferred thing is that payment creation. So you can either do it on blank stock or you can use a print and mail service. And we're gonna hear more about that later from Rich. He's gonna share with us one of those options. And then I did this in a timeline view, so that way you can see the clear division of the colors represents where did the task take place. 
And so all of the green, those are all tasks that take place in QuickBooks. All of the blue, those would be tasks that would take place in today's webinar, we're talking about Check Run. So those would be the tasks that take place in Check Run. And that's how you create a, a process that has all of the different pieces in it, and then all of the people are clear on where do they belong in that task. So whenever we're talking about what the best option is, there has to be a balance here. We have to be able to say we want paperless payments. We want to be able to release that genius. We want to tap into our Einstein. So some of the ways that we can do that is agree on looking at what could help us to monitor what we're doing, what can we do to make sure that we are doing things that will progress us to a situation where we've got smarter and safer payments. And being able to have those payments that are fast and then being able to work remotely. Many of you said that, yes, you were good before COVID, but now it's time to look for a change. And so being able to get the help that you need, again, I'm gonna say that goes back into working with an app means that you have this department there and they should be responsive and being able to answer questions for you because that is that cohesive relationship with that app. That's a sign of a really good solution is whenever it feels like it's an extension of your business. So if we think about the future of checks, I love this image here. And the reason I do is it is a great visual to say, this can be a whole mobile process. And so maybe as the accountant or bookkeeper professional, you're putting in the data with the bills, you're doing that OCR piece, and then what you need is to send off for approval. So you've put all of the data in, maybe Wednesdays are your days to enter all the bills, and then Thursdays are the days that you want all of the approvals to take place, and then Fridays are going to be the payment days. So if you send it out in bulk, you can meet your client anywhere via a mobile app. So that eliminates that bottleneck that took place early with the person and with the technology. And so whenever we're talking about the future of checks, there's several things here that are just critical to us to being able to sync the data. Remember, I really like the idea of having that check image live over in QuickBooks. I really like that our accounting solution, the integrity of it has been maintained, but yet we know QuickBooks doesn't have all of the pieces and the parts that we need for being able to process a lot of payments. And so this pulls in a department that that's what they do. With that said, I'm gonna ask Emily to go ahead and launch our next poll. Thank you, Emily. So we would like to use mobile devices to approve payments if it was available. I'll have you know that I'm not allowed to answer these questions as a panelist, but I'm going to say extremely likely. <laughs> so that would be my answer. All right, Emily, I'm going to go ahead and count this down. So five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so I think that that is not surprising so that most people are saying yes, that um, mobile is is needed it's just needed and i think that 2021 is going to still be a mobile year i just kind of do so uh whenever i was talking about earlier with the automation starts at the point of creation the sooner the better this goes back to that this goes back to we want to create this really good process and it involves all of these different steps that we were talking about evaluating earlier and preventing and so what I'm going to show here is, again, just where do these different processes take place? And so I've outlined them in color so you can see QuickBooks, the goods and the services, the bill automation, all of those pieces are going to take place inside of your QuickBooks Online. And then the next phase of it is going to take place in your uh, payment solution. In this case, Check Run. We've got the approval that we can do, email or mobile device, and then we've got the payment creation. And that can be their print and mail service, or it can be on blank check stock. And I think that what I have here is one more poll, and I'm going to pass it over to you, Rich. So while the poll is going up, I'm going to stop sharing. So, Rich, you can share.
go ahead and count this poll down. Oh, sorry. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, and one. Ah, fantastic. So it depends on the cost. I think that that's fair. It's like, yes, I want the solution, but it needs to be affordable. I am happy to say that Rich is here. He is going to help us with understanding the workflow. And so I will mute myself and let you take it away, Rich. Thank you, Liz. Great job on that, uh, that presentation. I think I learned some things too. Um, you know, one thing I want to start with is just give a little description of where the genesis of CheckRun came from. About 10 years ago, we had some major top 10 financial institutions come to us and ask us if we could help them with their cashier checks, but have them be, be printed remotely at their clients' locations. So we invented some technology that allowed the, the bank's clients to request, approve, and go through workflows of cashier's checks. And then on the back end in the bank, we do all the work necessary to fund and, and get the check ready. And then that check is available and printed at that client site. And what we thought about was, you know, that is a really good technology, it's a good step forward, and it could be a very viable technology for B2B. And so CheckRun is the, uh, the out, outcome of that, of moving that technology over to a SaaS and a mobile product for business to business payments. So I'll go through the, the, the demo part of it right now. Let's see. Make sure my screen is working. Got it. Okay. So the first part of the demo is I'd like to demo what I think is the, the workflow that makes the most sense. It's, it's the most streamlined workflow. And that workflow is, is a process where we're doing everything from our mobile device. Um, and so what we're going to demonstrate is we're going to go into QuickBooks and get some payments ready to print. And then we're going to get a notification on our mobile device. And then we're going to approve that payment on our mobile device. Um, our applications are actually applications. It's not, uh, it, for security purposes, it's better to actually develop an application and have it work in the, uh, in the stores, uh, be approved in the stores than it is to have a browser-based uh, access from a mobile device. Uh, Security-wise, it's just, just much, much better. So, so we developed those mobile applications and let's, uh, let's start the demo. So first thing is we're, we're in QuickBooks and we're going to, you can either create an ex, uh, a check or I, I take an item that if you already previously created. Uh, the whole thing you need to do to get it ready for check run is just set it as print later. Now that triggers check run to uh, extract the data out of QuickBooks, including any attachments, and send out notifications if the workflow is set up for approvals. So, um, so at, that, at this point, that, uh, that item that we just set for print later, it could have been a whole batch of them, but we just demonstrated one, uh, was actually a push notification out to this mobile device. Uh, it also could be sent uh, by email. So there can be an email notification to the approvers. Uh, and it could be both. So, um, so this particular case, we're demonstrating the uh, push notification. Once I've got the push notification, I can go into the our mobile app. I can log into that. Um, you can use biometrics to log into the application. Uh, we can we can with payments. We can select the payments. We could look at the details, including if there's any attachment. Let's say you took a an a, a image of the invoice. Uh, you can even zoom in on it uh, if you wanted to from the mobile device and just understand, you know, that stack that used to go around with that, with the checks that were getting signed. You can see all that information, all that data is available. Now you can make a decision if you'd like to approve it or to reschedule it. And in this case, I have print and mail set up as my default. So after I approve the check, it's actually going to be printed and mailed without anybody in my company being involved in the process. Uh, AP technology will take care of that. So I have an option to sign here or use a fixed signature that was uploaded previously. I'm gonna sign. That signature will be on the check that is, that is printed. So at this point, the payment is successfully approved if it, if it requires no other step for approval and it's done by noon the same day, uh, we print and mail that check and, uh, and send it, send that check or the checks and send it out to, uh, to, your, to your client or to your, trading partners. So, um, so after that's done, since you weren't involved in the check printing process, you didn't have an opportunity to take those checks 
and run them over to the copier and make a copy of them uh, and put them into your, your folder before, uh, before they went out. So what we've done for you is we've made it simple to, to uh, I'm sorry about that technology here. We've made it simple to, uh, we push the, an image of that check back into the original payment. So you can see an image is now available. And so that is, that is the, the check that was printed and mailed on your behalf. So, so that's, one, that's one workflow. So we, we think that workflow is the simplest one where we, it's all mobile, what I'll call it paperless because instead of printing checks and printing all the docu uh, backup documentation, driving out to meet somebody and doing all those things necessary and getting the signed checks and going back and stuffing to mail them, um, it, you can eliminate all those steps and just do it a more modern way with, with the mobile device. You also have an option and, and these work together. You could also log into our SaaS application, which is at checkrun.com. And when, once inside checkrun.com, you also have an option to print the checks locally. Let's say some of the checks you wanted us to print and mail, but maybe one of them, somebody's gonna come to your office to pick up the check. So, uh, so you might wanna choose that particular item to pr print locally. Uh, we also talk about scheduling. We'll also talk about some reports. So logging into the uh, logging into the application, uh, we simply use our Intuit login, or we can or you can create logins directly in, in our application with username and password. If you belong to multiple memberships, you can choose which membership you'd like to work on at this particular time. These are the payments that were exported from QuickBooks. You didn't have to take any action to do it, but set those those payments up as print later, and we automatically. Uh, synchronize and pull those payments. In this particular demo, we're approving payments. One payment of these of these payments is over over the limit of um, of five thousand dollars, which is the workflow we set up for this demo. So that particular payment needs a, a secondary approval step, which we'll do in the background offline. And after that approval is done, then uh, our system will will. Uh, identify that and show that all the checks are ready to be printed. All these steps to take place, there's also notifications going on in the background. So now we have checks ready to be printed. We can select individual checks to print or we can select all the checks to print. Um, we're gonna select all, hit the print button. Now we have the option, we memorize the check number or you could change the next starting check number if you'd like. Um, that in your bank account information can be modified right there in that screen. Um, we have a lot, if you're going to print it yourself, a lot of different layouts you can choose from. Um, we can create a brand new one, which we'll do here. I think let's do bottom check. Yeah, bottom, bottom check. In that, this particular case, we're going to show you how easy it is to customize a layout for your, for your own need. So we're going to up, up the, upload a logo um, just from a local uh, image on your local desktop. Let's see, let's grab a logo file here. Great. Okay, and uh, we're going to save that. Now that can be will be automatically scaled to fit the current layout, or you can change the the scaling if you'd like to change that. So let's hit preview so we can see the logo. I also set up um, the preview so we can see what it would look like on check stock, even though we don't print all that blue and stuff in the background. That's a, just a simulation of what your check stock would be. You can also do either. Um, amount based or fixed signatures. And so we're gonna add a fixed signature real quick to signature box one, update your check with that. And I'm gonna use signature box two as the approval based, uh, approval based signature. So there's, that's what that looks like. We can zoom in on it. And you can see just uh, as, a, as a basic, we have a secure QR code that we add to the check. We have a secure font that we add to the check. So let's go ahead and print those checks. Okay, the image should come up. Let's zoom in on that so we can see the, the different checks that are available that, are, that have been rendered to be printed. Now we'll just send that to whatever your local printer that you choose um, and then let them be printed. At, that, at the end of that, you can decide if the checks have been printed correctly or, or you wanna reprint the checks or you just wanna reprint some of the checks by entering a, a check number. So that's the, the standard local check printing process. 
From a scheduling perspective, perspectives, uh, payments can be scheduled to appear in the uh, approver's queues at a different time and date. So I wanna show that to you real quick. Uh, I gotta log back in, log into, let's see, let's go to pedals. Yeah, let's go to that one. And uh, let's look at the payments and let's just select a payment item. Go down, select an item. That particular item I'm going to set to change the schedule. So reschedule it, choose a date in the future. And what that will do is that will remove it from the current approval queue, put it in the scheduled queue. So that actually could be changed back if you wanted to. Uh, but for now, that is out there waiting for the, the time in the future to, uh, to, uh, be, to, to become back and be approved. So that's, that's how we can approve or decline or uh, print checks. So after we're done checks, and so it's a very, very simple process. And, that, and I think, Liz, that's what you said was a key factor. And I, I think that we hopefully brought that to the table. Um, but you know, reports are important and understanding how, what, what takes place in our system. And also, if we're dealing with a, a financial institution that wants us to send a positive pay file, one of the great benefit of CheckRun is we have built in a, a positive pay library and it's, it's just part of the application. Uh, the good news is it is the world's largest library of it because we've been doing this for 20 years uh, with another product and uh, we just included that entire library into the system. So let me show you how easy it is to create your positive pay file. Let's log in again. If the technology allows me to, okay. Select a company. So from the dashboard, I can see there's five checks ready to be converted to pause of pay. I'll go and choose the account. Um, so it's based upon account. Each account could be associated with a different bank and each bank could be associated with a different format. So uh, we pull from our library, pull the format we want. It does memorize the uh, each time you do it for an account, but we wanted to demonstrate how we can change it. That's that simple, just hit export. And now it created a file and uh, the file is exported correctly. So that's how easy it is to create positive pay files. We also have the opportunity to look at our archive and look at um, history of, of checks that have been printed. So we could look at some details of, of a check. I don't quite remember this check, but let me, I can look at the image that was pushed back into QuickBooks here or I could look at the original attachments that were associated or, or any details with that. I also have a chance to look at the history of that check. So I can see all the actions were taken related to that check in the process. So who did what, who approved it, when they approved it, et cetera. So it's, it's that simple to get some details on the reports of the system. From a security perspective, um, AP Technology has been doing this for a long, long time, as I said, since 1989. And our, our technology has always been based upon security. That's why financial institutions allowed us or asked us to be the ones to invent technology for them to print cashier's checks remotely. Um, this should have been a, a quiz for you, Liz, but uh, uh, what do you think the largest check that has ever been printed with our, remote, with our banking system has been? So it's a physical check. What do you think the amount was? And so I'll, I'll, I'll give you some clues. A lot of people might think it might've been a million dollars or might've been in the range of $10 million or you can get really crazy and say it was in the range of a hundred million dollars. And I'll give you the answer is $4.6 billion. So um, you can imagine the technology and the security uh, that we had to go through to be able to develop that technology for that. And that's what we've done and brought here today. I'm just gonna point, point out one really cool feature, um, Julie's going to use her phone here and she's going to show us with, with her phone in, um, uh, in uh, just, just using the camera that, oh, sorry about that, using the camera that you can go and look at the QR code on the check. And with that QR code, it takes you to our website and we can validate the data so you can, you can take a look and see the values that should be on the check in case anybody has tampered with or modified that check. So it's a way of, 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 of identifying that that check is, is good 
and it has not been uh, been tampered with. So, uh, so with that, I'll give a quick summary. Um, we didn't cover everything, but I wanted to make it uh, as smooth as possible. You can easily select items within QuickBooks. So that's where you set up the checks. Um, they'll automatically be synced into our mobile apps and our cloud app. And from there, you could review, approve, and sign, even set up workflows that are multiple levels of approvals so that checks of certain amounts go to another stage and notify someone else to do that approval. Uh, checks can be automatically printed with our print and mail service, or you can print the checks anywhere at any of your offices. And the beauty of printing the checks yourself is we either can print checks in your existing pre-printed check stock, or you can buy blank check stock, as Liz was mentioning before, and get rid of that st those stack of checks there that are locked up in a closet somewhere and just use the same check stock for all the checks and not worry about mixing accounts and things like that. Um, so blank check stock is a great benefit of using a, a solution like ours. One of the things that is really important to me, I'm skipping to the bottom because I think it's the most important one to mention is that with printing checks through our system, you're, you're doing payments out of your accounts. You do not need to pre-fund to us. Uh, you do not need to send money to us four days ahead of time for us to print the check for you seven days later. Um, you're printing the checks yourself or we're printing them on your behalf, but they are coming out of your account. So there's no pre-funding needed. And that's actually a huge benefit why people are going back from ACH back to checks is because from a cash flow management perspective, checks feel a lot like cash. I mean, I could wait till I get a payment in, approve it at that moment and have that check go out that day. So I made my payment on time, but only when I know my cash flow is, is meeting my needs for that. The other thing about a check is, is that remittance data. So a lot of times we make a payment to a vendor and we do not, you know, we make a partial payment. There's maybe there's seven bills from them and we only paid three of them at this time. And they don't quite know without doing a lot of gymnastics on the other side, exactly how you came across that number that showed up on the ACH. So if you're doing, uh, if you're using checks, we do include all the remittance information, which is a great benefit to the people who are receiving the checks, which means you'll get less phone calls from a support department, support accounting support perspective where your, your, um, your partners are saying, what'd you pay me for? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what this is. Um, we have pause pay built into the application and you know we do integrate with QuickBooks, not just grabbing data for QuickBooks, but actually pushing data back into QuickBooks. Images are stored in QuickBooks, so they'll be there as long as you want them to be. And you can even print them out of QuickBooks, those images, uh, if you wanted to still put them in that filing cabinet. So that, Liz, is the demonstration. Hey, that's fantastic. And there's been several different questions that have came in. And so Julie and Rachel have both been answering those over in chat, so thank you. And then there's also a couple of other questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen again, so that way I can, uh, do, 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 do. let's see. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and say before we answer those questions, let's go ahead and launch this poll. And Emily, if you can launch that poll, that'd be great. And so would you like to have more information about Check Run? And while you're answering that poll, I'll tell you the thing that's coming up next is we've got some questions that have came in. And so I want to um, give Rich a chance to answer some of those questions live because there's nothing like being under pressure. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and count down that last poll. So five, four, three, two, and one. And then all right, so we've got a couple of questions here, and I'm going to go ahead and ask the first question that I've got on here. So does Check Run permit one payment to a single vendor of multiple invoices? So I think that what this means is there's a vendor that has been sending over multiple bills, and now we need to issue one payment. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's one of the beauties of using the, the check product is that we will print the uh, light items for each one of the different invoices. Um, and uh, so you can have multiple invoices into one check, or you can obviously do a check run that has multiple checks to the same vendor. Um, it's just whichever way you prefer to do it. There was a couple of other questions here, and it says, how many days do I need to pre-fund payments uh, with your system? And you answered this, but do you want to go yeah. ahead and... Well, same thing. Is, you know, the checks are coming out of your account, so the good news is there is no pre-funding. It's, you know, as, as you said earlier, Liz, you need to make sure you have money in your account, but other than that, you're, you have no pre-funding. Awesome. Yeah, you need to be able to pay your bills. Uh, so the next question is, are you able to print checks yourself using Check Run, or uh, what about that print and mail option? So do you want to elaborate on maybe both of those two choices? Yeah, the, the print and mail option is basically um, you don't have to do anything after you approve the checks uh, that, are, that we will take on the responsibility to print the checks and get them in the mail. Um, we do have a cutoff for a particular day. If you miss a the cutoff, they'll go out the next day uh, and that cutoff is noon. But, uh, uh, but we do offer that print and mail option to make it very simple for you. That way you don't have to have check stock and you don't have to worry about printing and, and, uh, and heading out to that mail truck. We'll take care of that for you. But if you do wanna print checks, either all of them or some of them, you can print them you can print them from our system at any of your offices because it's cloud based. It's, you know, you can, wherever you are, you can access it as long as you can reach a printer. Um, you can send those checks to the printer. And as, and as I tried to demonstrate, it's really, really simple to set up really professional looking checks. And one key of going from blank check stock, I think, to using, um, using the, uh, I'm sorry, preprint check stock to blank check stock is that if everybody uses the same preprint check, it makes it look like your business is kind of new, you know, maybe not as established. But if you have a check that's branded, it's got your look and feel, and it's unique compared to other checks that people uh, people receive, it kind of it helps represent your company. Ah, uh, so it's a an extension of your brand. Exactly. Awesome. And you answered this one. So can you print on blank check stock? And I'm going to go ahead and so for the person who asked that question. I'm going to say to follow up with Rich's answer just a moment ago, yes, you can. That's one of my favorite features about it is that you can print on your blank check stock, which means as an accounting professional, you don't have to have a whole bunch of check stocks that's pre-printed sitting in a drawer because we know that that's a fraud risk. We know whenever our clients do that, that's a fraud risk. And I've even seen it back in the days whenever I was going out to clients um, pre-COVID world. You know, one of the things I saw was there was even check stock in their office that had signatures on it. So goodness gracious, that's that's you know a really um, big opportunity for some improvement there. So this next question is going to go directly to those signatures that I was saying. So how do signatures work? Are they based on the approver, and how do I upload them into Check Run? Well, we I, we demonstrated uh, uploading a logo, lo uploading a signature is the same process. If you'd like to use a fixed signature, so example, when I approve, it applies that signature that I uploaded, um, as opposed to I want to use a live one front that I sign on my phone every time. So it's kind of a preference, but it's very very simple. All you do is you know if you have the file on your local machine, you just upload that file, and we will automatically scale it and make it transparent and. Uh, have it print on the document, hopefully looking fantastic for you. So the next question is about layout options. So they understand that, yes, they can use the, the blank check stock, but can they do, you know, layout options? Maybe they want to have the check at the top or bottom, whatever. Yeah, it's, it was really hard to see in the demo, but we have built um, template layouts that are probably every combination you can imagine with top, middle, bottom with copies or two copies or remittance or two remittance or extended remittance. For example, if you print checks that have lots and lots of different uh, invoices associated with it, it might go multiple pages. Um, we actually have a layout that will automatically handle that and automatically scroll into the next next pages with that um, so that uh, it will handle that part too. So. Um, yeah, yeah, we definitely have the ability to use any type of check stock. You don't have to buy the check stock from us, even though we do offer it and we have great quality check stock. But um, 
but any any blank check stock you'd like to use would work with our system. So I think I'm going to go ahead and tag onto this this next question because it goes perfectly with what you just stated. So if you've already got check stock that you've been um, using, can you go ahead and finish up using those before you buy blank check stock? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, absolutely, you can change on the fly your decision as to which check stock you, or which uh, form you want to use. So you can just choose the standard uh, preprint form, print those until the checks run out, and then uh, hopefully you have some blank check stock sitting around the office. You can just pop that in the printer and choose one of the other formats that match that blank check stock and, and go from there. Um, one of the other things I want to mention, since that's kind of a combination of your current world to your new world with check run, you also don't have to make a decision not to do electronic payments to do check payments. You can do both. You can combine those. You can use your current vendor for doing some payments electronic and move the move payments that make more sense over to check run that you don't want to prefund and want to be able to do remote approvals, et cetera, move all those over to, to, uh, to check run. So you can, you can use both systems. It's not a one or one or the other. And, you know, I would even add on to that, that there's some businesses that are never going to want to do ACH payments, law offices, they don't want to do, I, I have not experienced them being comfortable with ACH payments. You know, they really want to be able to have that documentation of the check, it left the office, there's an actual image of it. And so then you can follow along to see if it ever cleared. And, you know, there's other industries like brokerage firms or any of those kinds of things, they're never really going to move over into a true ACH world. So, you know, I feel like checks are still going to be necessary for a lot of different industries for many different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm going to go back over here and look at my list of questions. And one of them, ooh, are my attachments available in your system from QuickBooks Online? I, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand that one. So are my attachments available in your system from QuickBooks oh. Online? I think what they mean here yeah. is, are we able to see the attachments in, in all places? Are we able to see that, that check image? Yeah, you, you can see, well, there's two types of attachments. One are the ones that you attach that might be images of your bills or some support information that you could attach to the payments. And Checkbook will make that date that those attachments available both on the cloud and on the uh, mobile apps. Um, and then we add to the attachments when the check is done, we add an, add an image of the check into that list of attachments, which is available both in QBO and in, in our systems. Awesome. And so we were talking about creating a check inside of QuickBooks and then uh, actually processing that check inside of CheckRun. But this question is about how do I import my payments into check run? And I'm gonna go ahead and add to that one. How do you support bill payments? Because we're kind of running out of time and I, both of those are good questions. Right, right. So um, either either payment uh, either payment types, uh, we will do bill payments uh, or regular check payments, uh, either one. All you have to do is when you collect, create the payment, you hit the print later button, you hit save, that automatically identifies that payment to be included in the next sync, which will start the approval workflows. Fantastic. I am, I think that all questions, I think there's one that Julie or Rachel just answered uh, also. So thank you, because there was a lot of questions coming in and from many different directions. I want to say thank you to Emily for uh, being our host today and making sure that our webinar ran smoothly. And I want to say thank you to the Check Run team. We have Rich here who did a phenomenal job of giving us a demo of Check Run so that way we understand it. And then Julie and Rachel, thank you for answering those questions that were coming in. Thank you very much, Liz. Great job. And like Emily said earlier, this is going to be a recording that will be available later on for viewing. And the slides, if you're interested in those, those will be available later as well. So thank you very much for everybody's time today and enjoying joining us today for um, information about how can we make the payments process just easier. Thank you. And hey. with that, Emily, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Liz. You pretty much hit all my points. So I'll just repeat one more time. Everybody will get the webinar recording and handouts here in a follow-up email later today. Liz, Rich, thank you again so much for being here today. Great presentation from both of you. 
Um, and we hope to do it again sometime soon. Everyone, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us and we hope you have a great day. Hope to see you at the next Insightful Accountant webinar. Tomorrow, Liz will be on QB Talk. So if you're not already registered, go ahead and register and we'll see you there. Have a good one.